If you've never used a tool called Airtable, today's video is for you. Honestly, before I really used it and I came across an Airtable file, it kind of looked like a pretty spreadsheet and I wasn't sure what the value of it is over Google Sheets and Excel. And I definitely did not need another spreadsheet tool in my life. So today I'm going to show you what Airtable can do over other spreadsheet-like tools like Google Sheets and why you should use it. Hi everyone, my name is Romy and welcome back to Make Something with Romy. In this channel, we go over all the things you can make without knowing how to design or code. Before I start, let's get one thing straight. Airtable and Google Sheets aren't technically the same thing, even though they may look like the same. And that's because Google Sheets is simply a spreadsheet. Airtable actually handles data that links to each other. In other words, a relational database. Okay, before I turn you off from Airtable completely, you actually don't need a relational database to start using Airtable. You just need some data. So buckle up and I'm gonna show you around. So first, let's set up a database in both tools. For fun, the example I'll take for comparison is hypothetical trip planning for 2022. I know, I mean, we haven't traveled or taken a vacation in what seems like forever. Nothing can stop us from planning fun trips for the future. I'm gonna make an imaginary itinerary for next year and use that to highlight the differences between Airtable and Google Sheets. Let's do it. To begin with, data types supported by Airtable far exceed what you can imagine. Let's dive into this a bit more. In Google Sheets, if I have to add a picture, I first have to upload it to my drive, copy that link, and then drop it onto Sheets. It's three steps. This is too much. I mean, imagine doing this for 10 trips. No way. In Airtable, you can create an attachment field, genius, and drop in literally any kind of attachments from images, PDFs, Excels, Word docs, presentations, and even large videos. All of it is possible and not just one, but multiple. And you can actually preview some attachment types within Airtable itself. Let's say I want to add a drop-down field for each type of trip, like small, medium, or big. To set it up on Google Sheets, I have to go through many steps to make it happen. Honestly, I never remember them. I always need to Google it. In Airtable, this is a breeze. There is a field type called single select. And now I can choose the type of trip. One of my favorite fields in Airtable is multi-select. As the name suggests, you can add a multi-select field type and then pick as many values. And boom, we have this column here called things done. Now I can pick research and flights booked, for instance. Super helpful to see in one place. So in Google, you can only do this with code which is not really a good workaround for people who don't know how to code. I'm sorry. One of my favorite parts in Airtable is that it lets you assign people to a record, which just can't be done in Google Sheets. I mean, in Google Sheets, there's an owner of the spreadsheet and probably the best workaround if you want to assign an owner to a record is just use some text. But that's not really as effective when you're managing a multi-person project. You want people to own things directly within the table. You can also add a collaborator. In my case, it's going to be people I'm going to go with trips on. So there is no concept of adding a person to a spreadsheet on Google. It's just not there. Other fun fields which I didn't use in this example are ratings. I mean, this is the way to add a rating for a column, okay? Airtable takes looking good to another level entirely. I want to call out these four fields in Airtable, which are automatically generated. Created time, last modified time, created by, and last modified by. Suppose I add this field created time. It gets automatically generated. Not as useful in my case, but these can be super useful in a highly collaborative document. I do want some country level details for every trip. Instead of adding the same information for every country to every trip, I'll create a separate table 
and then link it. In Airtable, you can create a linked field, which pulls in information automatically for every record. Look, I can pull in visa information from that table into this one. See, that's what I meant when I said Airtable is meant for this kind of relational data. In Google Sheets, in comparison, you can link between sheets, but it's not inherently built to support relational data, as we call it. For instance, it won't automatically pull in other records once something is linked. Another favorite feature of mine is views. Till now, Airtable kind of just looks like a prettier version of Google Sheets, right? But there is so much more. Within the grid view, I can group by type of trip. So I can see how many small, medium, and large ones I have. If you have a lot of data, you can see how useful something like this can be. I can see all my trips in a calendar by adding a calendar view. The best part about views is if I want to move around any of these dates, I can do that within the calendar itself or I can visualize it as a gallery. I can customize individual cards by adding more information. Wow, take me to all these places now. We can also add a Kanban view. A Kanban board can only be organized by a single select field or a collaborator field in your data. In our case, let's go with a type of trip. These are ideal for to-do lists where you can move stuff around. Not as much for this one. Another cool feature is Forms, which is built within Airtable. I'll create a table here called Suggested Trips and within that create a form view. Now I can share these form links with my friends. And when they fill it out, it will show up as a record here. Then I can decide to move this to an actual trip based on the responses I get. So Google has no concept of views. The closest it has to a form view is Google Forms. But that's also a separate product. Let's take this to another level. Let's say we want reminders to pack for our trips. We can use Airtable automations to help us do that. In my case, the automation I set up is when my trip is within three days. It'll send me an email to remind me to pack. So Google can let you do this with some add-ons, but they're nowhere as easy to use. Airtable keeps a track of the history of changes on a record level. I can expand any record to see all the changes I've made. If I added other people, it'll show me their changes too. We can make any comments as well. While in Google Sheets, you have to navigate through this entire messy version history thing to try and get to the version you want. And God forbid, you have to find out who made what change. So here are some things which Google Sheets can do, which Airtable can't. <laughs> and there are some things. I have an example Google Sheets here. I can have a price in this column and then below that some text. In Airtable, I have to define what each column is upfront. So if I define this as a number, there is no way I can have some text below it. Airtable is strict about data consistency in columns and rows, which makes sense in some use cases. In this case, I have a bunch of numbers. I can multiply one by five, one by six, one by thousand. In Airtable, the same thing cannot be done easily. A formula field applies to the same column consistently. I have to define a formula up front and then multiply it by only one number, and that will apply to all the records. I can probably get around this with some logic statements, but it's way more complicated. So sometimes when I'm just trying to play with numbers, I prefer Google Sheets. It just gets the job done. Also for financial models, I prefer Google Sheets because I'm kind of used to it and it really works. Actually, I'm not a person who has stopped using Google Sheets. In fact, I still use Google Sheets for a lot of things. It's just that I use Airtable for the things which Airtable is good at. That's all. I'm not trying to convince you to leave Google Sheets. In fact, the opposite. I'm just trying to convince you to add Airtable to your toolkit and give it a shot. 
Sometimes you just want to type some number into a spreadsheet and do some quick analysis. My first tool of choice is Google Sheets. Airtable is my go-to when I'm managing projects, especially involving a number of people. Automating things with a database or using a database as the backend of my website. If you like this video, there are a couple of other videos I've made on Airtable which you can check out. The first is how you can organize your data in Airtable. The second is how you can create a paid community by using Airtable as a database. Please like and subscribe and hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. And this is Romy and I'm going to see you soon with the next video. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye.